Hello and welcome to this month's drawing tutorial. This month we're going to have a double challenge. First, the challenge of drawing a newborn baby and at a profile. And secondly, the challenge of a low value drawing. If you squint at this picture, everything becomes a silhouette. It's only when you look closely that you can see any of the details at all. And so this is mostly a flat gray with a few details picked out. So let's try drawing it and see how it goes. The first step in making your drawing, especially when you want it to closely resemble your reference material, is to measure that reference material, crop the way you want the final drawing to look, and get the dimensions, length and width. Then set up a ratio so that on your drawing paper you have the same proportions only enlarged to the size that you want your drawing to be. Next, measure around the outside of your reference material and give yourself some marks for the halfway point, both on the length and the width, and then some equally divided marks in between those. It doesn't matter what you use, so long as those marks translate to your drawing material once again. So in doing this, I'm creating a semi-grid that will help me to place the large shapes accurately. Now once the grid is placed and you have some good reference points that will help you translate from reference material to drawing, you're going to start placing those large shapes of the drawing. So squint and you can see a circle on an oval. Let's just start with that. So where should the top of the circle be? If this is one, the top of the head extends just a little bit over the one and the crux is between the A and the B, a little closer to the B. Alright, so then I'm going to go to my reference material and I'm going to place first that oval and then the shape of the body just like so. And then the hand comes over the body and that's going to cut about here, I'm looking at the negative space around that dark form now, and the rest of the hand is going to cut about here, with those feet sticking up, about here and here. So the first pass you make with just the large shapes is very, very light and very loose. I'm just getting the basic placement for where the drawing is going to go. After that's done, I'm going to erase some of those sloppy lines and I'm going to start cleaning them up with more precise lines. And every time I redraw a line, I'm going to erase the one that I'm replacing. And in this way, I'm going to slowly clean up my sketch. Here's the arm, here's a hand. Now once those large shapes are in place, you see, I go right into developing some of the smaller shapes that are on those large shapes. So the hand and the arm. I'm placing those not just randomly, but in reference to the head that I've already placed. And I'm still working really lightly because I know that more than likely that hand is going to be erased again. But you have to start somewhere on a drawing and so it kind of develop the whole thing at once with those large shapes and get them correct, slowly refine them to be more correct and then start to place those smaller shapes on top. Now when you get to the point where you need to make that face more accurate, you're going to want to give yourself guidelines. So I place a guideline for the eye, the eye goes in the middle of the head and then I'll place in this case a guideline from the center of the eye because that lines up with the corner of the mouth. So once I have those guidelines, then see how I can make a box for where the eye goes and then really lightly sketch that shape in. So now let me go off camera for about an hour and finish up my rough drawing and then I'll come back to you. Once you've created your initial sketch, you can go ahead and start filling in the tone. And in this drawing, it's going to be a little bit different because there's such a dark gray base tone against a really light background. So I'm going to get out my chamois and some blending stomps and then I'm going to use a fairly soft pencil and just start to lay that tone in, going over pretty much everything all in the first pass. 
But see how I'm holding the pencil at the back and then go straight into the baby's hair, from the hair right over to the face, and so on and so forth until I have a base tone all over everything in the portrait. You want to be a little bit careful so that you don't cover up the features that you've drawn so carefully. So you don't want to be pressing with the tip too hard so that you can see lines because those lines are going to be difficult to blend out. Now notice I am avoiding the highlights but I am not filling in the dark blacks yet. When I get to the diaper which is a lighter color I'm going to work around it. I'll add the shading to the diaper after the skin is done. But I'm going to go straight from the baby's flesh into the person holding him. Notice how I turn the paper to make the angle more natural feeling for me. That's what you should do as well. And just work this way until all the skin tone is in place. After the tone has all been filled in, then you need to start your first pass of blending. Now for the first pass of blending, when I'm doing flesh tones, I like to start with a chamois cloth. So I just take a clean corner of a chamois and I wrap it around my finger and then I'm going to use little circle strokes and go all the way around filling this all in. It will go very quickly and it will make a nice smooth tone. The only downside is that it's going to lighten things up considerably. Now the next step, I need to go and redefine some of these lines before they get lost. And it's going to be really important that you use a clean piece of paper and protect the surface from smearing, especially now that you have some tone on everything. I'm just going to go back, redefine these lines. I'm not outlining, but I'm just choosing some of the darker lines here and there. And I'm going to go back and add some definition over the top again. And then after I've done that all over, I'm going to go back with the same pencil and I'm going to re-add tone the same way that I did before. Only this time I'm going to go a little bit more carefully I'm going to emphasize the darkest areas only, and I'm going to blend differently. So here I'm darkening up the hair, and then I'm going to blend that with a stomp, which is a rolled piece of paper. They come in many different sizes, so use whatever is the largest size for the area to ensure the smoothest finish. But blending with a stomp is going to give you a much darker finish than blending with a chamois cloth. It doesn't pick up the graphite so much. It sort of mashes it down and smears it into the paper. So then I can go back and forth, emphasizing lines with the pencil, blending with the stomp, and emphasizing again. So now let me add just a little bit more tone. You've seen the process. And I'll come back to show you how we push it forward. This is what the drawing looks like after a second pass of adding the tone and blending it smooth. And at this time, I'm ready to go into the drawing with a darker, softer pencil and add some detail in these shadow areas and start work on the features. But the first thing I want to do is go in with my kneaded eraser and just make sure that those outer lines where it's supposed to be really nice and light are kept clean. I'll work from the top down just to avoid smearing. And I'm going to be doing a lot of emphasizing around anything that is dark. And notice that I'm working with the point of the pencil, but it's a blunt tip. So even on the tip, I'm not going to dig into the paper and make thin lines that will be difficult to get rid of. In this stage, I'm also emphasizing and redefining for the last time some of these precise small shapes. So I'm defining through a negative shape just exactly how that baby's arm is supposed to look. Here's a definite line between the baby's body and the arm darkening that up. Then there's this shadow that the baby is casting on his own chest. Shadows always start out the darkest at the source of the shadow and then they lighten up the farther away they get from the source. So down here is going to be the darkest area of this shadow and then as the shadow swoops up and moves across the baby's chest it gets lighter. Just be sure that you're not over outlining your drawing. This drawing is a little different because it's mostly shading. The base tone is so dark because of the backlighting that you can't see that much detail. So you really need to emphasize the detail that you can see. and Keep it nice and subtle, but keep it very accurate. So there is a whole world of difference between these shadows on the foot, for instance. So then when I start to blend those new shadow shapes, 
I'm going to use my stomp and I'm going to start at the darkest area and blend my way out with those little circle strokes. When I'm at the base and the darkest part of the shadow shape, I press down hard and as I move away, my strokes are longer and they're a lot lighter. So let me do this work now and I'll come back to you when I've pushed it a little bit farther. Now the darks have been well shaded and blended a few times and it's time to start the tightening up phase. So I'm going to get a nice sharp pencil, protect the paper from everything that I'm not working on, and I'm going to start adding those final details. So there are these flyaway hairs coming off the top of the head and I need to add some tone to the eye. And take your time and be really nice and careful because you don't want to commit yourself to a mistake. And the harder you dig in to make it dark, the harder it is to erase. And just adding a little bit of line here and there to emphasize details that are already there. The other important part of this step is going to be to have a kneaded eraser on hand and just really carefully bring out the highlight edge on some of these features. In the blending process, sometimes you lose your highlights and then you just have to keep bringing them out and sharpening them up again, especially if they're supposed to be kept really bright. Use your kneaded eraser so that you can mash that dirty part back into the eraser and go at it again with a clean edge. So this is the only work that's left to be done on the drawing and I'm going to take my time off camera and just add some of these tiny, tiny little details and then I'll come back one last time and show you the finished work. After some final touch-up work, this is the finished drawing. Now what I did to finish it up was I increased some of the contrasts by using a piece of willow charcoal and I just brushed over existing tones like this and then I blended those in using a soft brush, just a paintbrush using circle strokes like this. Now, the benefit of willow charcoal is that it does blend and it works well over graphite because it's so soft. But that's also the downside of willow charcoal. It's always going to smear unless you spray it with fixative. So you can use the willow charcoal and then also emphasize with a very soft graphite pencil, a 9B or so, and then just use some circle strokes like this to put down additional tone and either blend that or not as you see fit. Then, use a kneaded eraser to pluck out some final sharp highlights and then you can go back in with a pencil and emphasize lines that might have gotten blended out or where you need there to be an even sharper contrast. But that's all there is to it. So making a backlit portrait is very very similar to making a front or side lit portrait. It's just going to be a matter of building up more tones than usual. So when you get to this level, I would recommend putting the drawing away and coming back to it with fresh eyes and make some final assessments. You'll be surprised how many times you've catch big mistakes that you simply didn't see because you were working on it for too long and too close up. So that concludes this month's drawing tutorial. I hope that you learned something you can take away with you to your own studio. I will upload the reference material so you can try your hand at doing this exact drawing. Or if not this one, draw another backlit form of your choosing and see what kind of results you get. Thanks so much for watching.